Today we're going to be looking at the last of the three trends in the periodic table and that trend is electronegativity. You are going to need your data booklet again today but instead of the ionisation energy on page 12, oh sorry page 11, we are looking at the electronegativities. So what we are looking at are these numbers running down the right hand side of the page here and I have circled them on the PowerPoint for you but it does say electronegativity at the top. So electronegativity is our new word for today that we're learning and with a new word comes a new definition. So electronegativity is the strength of an atom's attraction to bonded electrons and you'll see that on page 11 electronegativity values um, they range between 0 0.8 and 4.0. 0 0.8 being the lowest attraction for bonded electrons and 4.0 being the highest attraction for bonded electrons. So for example, fluorine has an electronegativity value of 4, so it has a very strong attraction for bonded electrons, whereas um, cesium has an electronegativity value of 0 0.8, so it has a very low um, attraction for bonded electrons. And all that means is that fluorine wants to pull electrons towards itself and cesium doesn't feel that urge as much. It's not wanting to pull those electrons towards itself as strongly. At higher level, you have to be able to annotate electronegativities on bonds and be able to represent where in the bond the electrons are lying. So for example, if we look at hydrogen, um, hydrogen and chlorine, um, they have a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, therefore that covalent bond represents two electrons. Now we can look up the electronegativity values of hydrogen and of chlorine. So hydrogen's electronegativity value is 2.2 .2, and chlorine's electronegativity value is 3.0. So if those electronegativity values were the same, the electrons would lie in the middle of the bond, but they're not the same. We've found that chlorine has a higher electronegativity value than hydrogen. Therefore, chlorine wants to pull bonded electrons towards itself more strongly than hydrogen. So the electrons will lie ever so slightly closer to the chlorine atom. And the way that we represent that in chemistry as we see that chlorine is delta negative and we give it this little d sign with a negative and that hydrogen is delta positive so delta negative meaning the electrons are lying closer to chlorine and the delta positive meaning that uh, your hydrogen is feeling a little bit positively charged because it's not got the electrons as close to itself another example would be nitrogen and hydrogen so again, hydrogen's electronegativity value is 2.2. .2. Nitrogen's electronegativity value is 3.0 again. Yep, 3.0. So nitrogen has a stronger electronegativity value. Therefore, the electrons will be lying ever so slightly closer to the nitrogen atom. Therefore, nitrogen will be delta negative and hydrogen will be delta positive. And finally, if we look at phosphorus and hydrogen, hydrogen's electronegativity value is 2.2. .2. Phosphorus electronegativity value is also 2.2. .2. So both of those atoms have an equal attraction for bonded electrons. So the bonded electrons in the covalent bond will not be pushed or pulled towards either atom. They will be sitting in the middle of the bond. So we don't give phosphorus and hydrogen in this um bond a delta negative or a delta positive sign because they are both feeling the exact same amount of the negativity from the electrons um, and the electrons are sitting right in the middle of the bond. So if we look at the trend in electronegativity for um, the in, in the periodic table, electronegativity decreases going down a group and electronegativity increases going across a period. So you'll find that the most electronegative atoms are up in this top right hand corner and the most, um, oh, sorry, the least electronegative um, atoms are down in this bottom left hand corner. So electronegativity increases in a diagonal up this way and we say that electronegativity decreases going down a group and it increases going along a period. 
So at higher level, we have to explain why does this trend happen? And let's start, first of all, by looking at going across a period. So why does electronegativity increase as we go along a period? Well, we know from looking at covalent radius and looking at ionisation energy that as we go across a period, the number of electron shells stays the same. So we're going along this period and all of these elements have two electron shells. However, every time we jump one step to the right, the elements are gaining a proton and therefore nuclear charge is increasing. And because this nuclear charge is increasing, it, as you go along a period, the outer electrons are pulled closer to the nucleus, which causes covalent radius to decrease. And because those outer electrons are much closer to the nucleus, the attraction for bonded electrons becomes stronger going along a period. If we look at the trend going down a group, we know that going down a group electronegativity decreases. And as we've seen before, again, the number of electron shells that an atom has increases as we go down a group. Hydrogen's got one electron shell, lithium's got two electron shells, and sodium has three electron shells. And those extra electron shells, as we go down a group, they are shielding the inner, the inner electrons, sorry, are shielding the outer electrons from the nuclear charge. And we've said before that that is called the shielding effect. The inner electrons are acting as layers in between the nucleus and the outer electrons, and they are shielding the outer electrons from the nuclear charge. Now, if those outer electrons are being shielded from the nuclear charge, that must mean that those atoms have less of an attraction for bonded electrons, which means that electronegativity decreases. So we're going to have a look at some questions from the pupil booklet and I've also got two extra practice questions here as well to go through. If you haven't had a look at these questions yet and you haven't tried them yet, as always, pause the video, go and have a little go at the questions and then you can follow on with me and mark your work as you go. So we are going to start with question 10 and question 10 asks, draw the partial charges on the following bonds. So partial, uh, par partial charges, we're wanting to draw the delta positives and delta negatives for that bond. So first of all, we'll start with bromine hydride. And if I'm going to draw partial charges, then the first step is knowing the electronegativities of these atoms. So I'm going to go to page 11. I'm going to look up the electronegativity of bromine, which is 2.8. And I'm going to look up the electronegativity of hydrogen, which is 2.2. So bromine has the higher electronegativity value here, which means that bromine is going to have the electrons sitting closer to itself and have a partial charge of delta negative, And hydrogen will have a partial charge of delta positive. So my electrons will be somewhere a bit closer to bromine. So that was A. For question B, We've got sodium iodide. I'm looking up the electronegativity values for sodium and iodine. Sodium's electronegativity value is 0.9. Iodine's electronegativity value is 2.6. Therefore, the electrons are sitting closer to our iodine here, which means that your sodium gets a delta positive charge and iodine gets a delta negative charge. So that is me drawing um, the partial charges on each of these atoms and those bonds. If you got both of them right, you can give yourself a mark for each. For question 11, it asks, explain why there are no electronegativity values for neon or argon. So if you look at page 11 in your data book clip, you'll find that there are no electronegativity values for any of the noble gases. And there's a very simple explanation for that. So the noble gases are stable. And they have full electron shells. So this means that they don't form bonds.
which means there is no electronegativity value data for those um, noble gas elements. So for question 12, I took that from a 2018 past paper. Um, it says explain why electronegativity values decrease going down a group. Well, going down a group, the number of electron shells increases. Therefore, the outer electrons become more shielded from nuclear charge. And that means that those outer electrons aren't feeling the electronegativity value in they aren't feeling the pull of the nuclear charge as strongly. Therefore, electronegativity decreases. Question 13 says, describe the trend in electronegativity values going across the period from sodium to chlorine. So going across a period, the number of protons in the nucleus increases this is the same as increasing nuclear charge this causes the atom to contract or become smaller causing an increase in electronegativity. Or even better, you say, causing an increase in an atom's attraction for bonded electrons because that lets the examiner know that you understand what electronegativity is. So as usual, Make sure you mark your questions and you give yourself a little mark. And if you have any comments or any questions, you can email me um, and I can try and help you out. Have a lovely day, guys.